can't have a good Pixar movie without a bunch of Easter eggs, right? There are more than a few to spot in Finding Dory, the long-awaited 2016 sequel to Finding Nemo. Let's dive in and find out what you might have missed during the movie. And it should go without saying, but there are spoilers ahead. Darla Strikes Back? When Dory gets taken into the Marine Life Center's quarantine room, she looks over at a bulletin board with a photo of a very familiar girl with headgear pinned to it. That's right, if you're quick enough, you can spot a picture of Darla, the fish-tormenting girl from the original Finding Nemo. Of course, just why there's a picture of an Australian girl in a California Marine Life Center, we just can't answer. Maybe her reputation for torturing our finny friends has spread across the Pacific Ocean. Wired. The movie's two sea lion characters, Fluke and Rudder, are voiced by Idris Elba and Dominic West, respectively. These two actors starred in the HBO series The Wire, with Idris playing Russell, Stringer Bell, and West playing Detective Jimmy McNulty. As Fluke and Rudder, they sit on a rock and help Nemo and Marlin find their way into the Marine Life Center, all while keeping their spot safe from other sea lions like Gerald. Uh, mate, don't you worry about... Maybe not the same level of drama as The Wire, but you take what you can get in a kid's movie. A113. Fluke and Rudder also happen to hide another Easter egg. As pointed out by the Pixar Post blog, merchandise featuring the characters have tags on their flippers that read A1 and 13. That's a reference to the classroom at the California Institute of the Arts, where many of the Pixar and Disney animators learn their craft. And it's appeared in every Pixar movie ever released. Not to mention more than a few Disney movies, too. The Pizza Planet Truck Rides Again You can also spot the famed Pizza Planet Truck from the original Toy Story when Hank and Dory steal the transport truck headed for Cleveland. We're not sure how many different Pizza Planet franchises there are throughout time and space, but this beat-up yellow truck sure gets around. It's appeared in just about every Pixar flick. Wall-E Calendar in the scene where Hank the Septopus hangs from the pipes above the open ocean tank, there's a small desk in the top right corner of the screen. Above that desk is a calendar that reads Wall-E. It would have also been cool to see some by and large items littered around, giving some credence to the theory that these Pixar movies are all part of the same shared and ultimately doomed world. But sure, a calendar's fine too. Herbie the Love Bug. Be on the lookout for a familiar face, kind of. Buried down on the ocean floor is the world's most famous 1963 Volkswagen Beetle, Herbie the Love Bug. Of course, as cute as the deep Disney reference is, it's actually a pretty creepy spot for Herbie's final resting place. Who knows, maybe this is one of those Easter eggs that Pixar sticks into their movies that hints at a future film. Maybe they'll take on a Herbie movie of their own. Or better yet, maybe he'll make a comeback in Cars 3. Ride Reminder According to Ultimate Orlando, one of the pipes in the Marine Life Center reads Seawater Supply TL-59. That's a reference to the Finding Nemo submarine voyage at Disneyland in Anaheim, California. This explanation doesn't stop there either. The attraction used to be called simply the Submarine Voyage, but was rethemed after the success of the film. The pipe was included on the line to the ride as a tribute to its former non-Nemo-themed existence. Return of the Tank Gang If you managed to sit through the credits, enjoying various snippets of Hank using his camouflaging abilities in different locations, then you'd be treated to a post credit scene featuring the sea lions Fluke and Rudder hanging out on their rock. And who should happen to come swimming past them? The Tank Gang from Finding Nemo. Brad Garrett, Willem Dafoe, and the rest came back to reprise their roles so we could see where the gang wound up. Hank, the greatest Easter egg of them all. Did you know that Hank the Septopus actually appeared in every one of Pixar's movies without anyone ever realizing it? It's true! Well, at least according to Finding Dory director Andrew Stanton and Hank's voice actor Ed O'Neill, who appeared in a video explaining that Hank had been camouflaged into every Pixar movie since the first Toy Story hit theaters way back in 1995. Wait, what? Oh, that video was published on April 1st, 2016, so yeah, never mind. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw, and leave us a comment to let us know which Easter eggs we missed.